Good morning. Let's begin our celebration today in the name of the Lord, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And now, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God, a great ruler over heaven and earth. Please enjoy our prelude from the Psalm Sea Singers. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates Enter with his giving and, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to his and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his Lord I'd like to welcome everyone again to our online celebration of the Lord's Day. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of this church as we end one liturgical year, year today and next Sunday we begin Advent, a whole new liturgical year when we go through the cycle of, of, of salvation history starting with, with the time that Israel waited for God. So thanks for being a part of our journey here, our journey of faith um, as, a, as, a, as a community at Clarkstown. We have struggled through our COVID challenges, but I think we've struggled very well. I think we've, we've managed to stay together. We've managed to, to, to use the tools that God's given us, tools like the internet and Zoom and, and, and uh, stuff like that, so that we can stay together, so that we can continue to worship together, so that we can every Sunday turn our minds and our hearts to God. And that's what we're doing right now. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank, thanks for being a part of who we are and thanks for letting us be a part of who you are because we are brothers and sisters and that is the most fundamental reality of our lives. We belong to each other and all Christians belong to each other. We are one in the spirit and one in the Lord. So thanks a million and please enjoy our sung call to worship um, from our, our wonderful tenor Chris Cantu. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and God's Law from Ephesians chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. 
God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Passing through, when will I be home again? You remind me, nothing here is permanent, but your word and your faithfulness. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was weary, you let me. With sincere and repentant hearts, let us confess our sin before God and before each other, confident that God is forgiving and loving and restoring, and that he always welcomes us home when we come to him. Lord Jesus, judge of the nations, we confess that we have not seen your face among our neighbors in need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. 
We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not offered clothes to the destitute or shelter to the homeless. Christ have mercy. Christ Christ have have mercy. mercy. We have not welcomed the stranger, nor have we visited prisoners. Lord have mercy. Lord Lord, have have mercy. mercy. In our neglect of our brothers and sisters in need, we have failed to serve you. Lord, forgive us. Open our eyes to recognize your beloved family and give us the blessing of sincere repentance that we may know the joy of eternal life with you and all the saints in this world and in the world to come. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God seeks the lost sheep and feeds them with justice and with love. Forgiven and freed, then turn and live in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And now please share some sign of that peace. And if you're with somebody, just shake hands with them or kiss them or hug them. Do whatever comes natural. And um, if you're not, please pray for the peace of our world. Peace in the Middle East. Peace, uh, especially where Christians are persecuted. Peace in our own country. Peace in our families. uh, Peace in our own hearts. So please take this moment and enjoy the peace of Christ as we ask God, Dona nobis pacha, give us peace. prayer for illumination. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts by the power of your Spirit, that we may know the hope to which we have been called in Jesus Christ. Amen. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, 
Thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scatter them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. 
Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Creator God, open our eyes so that we might see the presence of your Son, Jesus, in the world around us. And we ask this in his name. He is Lord with you forever and ever, and we can all say amen. Back about 10, 12 years ago, I was uh, working as an attorney at the Borough of Manhattan Community College, and I had a very long commute. I commuted from my home in Carmel, New York, to... to um, to Tribeca, which is the triangle below Canal Street. And uh, so it's a, it was a long ride, the traffic was always dreadful, and, and it was at least a two hour trip, worse in, in bad traffic, which was somewhat regular. So I had a lot of things to do in the car. I mean, I, I could think, I could, I could read uh, books on tape, or listen to books on tape. I could play the radio and some music, but I often prayed. And then this one day that I wanna speak about, I was praying. I, I remember ex almost exactly where I was. I was in the cross, just had just turned onto the Cross County Parkway, heading towards the sawmill, and um, I was praying. And I said, "Lord, today, show me your face. I want you to to really reveal your power to me. Would you do that?" Well, of course, I didn't get a direct answer, but but the rest of that day, I was on alert to look for the presence of God around me. And seeing God's face is an important thing to do, or at least looking for it. In the gospel today, Jesus is, is finishing up his last discourse to his disciples. It's, it's the week of his, it's the week, his death is days away. And he's already uh, talked to his disciples about the end of things, about the signs of the end, about the, the, the signs of the sun and the moon and the stars and the tumult among nations and stuff like that uh, before the great and glorious day of the Lord. And, and it piqued their interest that he should talk about this. But the, he said, I don't know when this is going to happen. Only, only the Father knows this. Not even the angels know it. He said, but I can tell you this. You better be ready. And so he, he then gives us these three parables of readiness that we had, we've reflected on for the past three weeks. The, um, the, the, the parable of the servant who is uh, waiting for the master to return. The parable of the wise and the unwise uh, bridesmaids who are also waiting for the master to return. And the parable of the talents last week, where we have three servants uh, who are using their, the, 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 the gifts that the, that, the, that the master has given them while he's away, and they wait for his return. And the point of each of those parables is you don't know when the master returns, but you must be ready. So don't fall asleep. Don't stop watching and expecting. Be watchful and be attentive. Because Jesus says over and over again in these parables, you do not know the day, nor do you know the hour. And then we have the, the gospel that we just heard today. And it, it could be considered a fourth parable of readiness, but it's really more like a... Um, an apocalyptic vision. 
that Jesus shares of the last day, the final judgment, and, and how it, it works. So Matthew starts this passage, when the Son of Man comes in glory. Let's just, just think about that for a second. He says, when the Son of Man comes in glory. Not if, not in case. There is something definite here. The Son of Man will come in glory. And when he comes, we must be ready. So there will be an accounting. The, the, the point of all of these parables, and of this vision as well, is there will be an accounting. We have been given gifts. We have been given time. We've been given life. We've been given, we've been giving, given uh, aspects of our personality, and we are not to bury those things. We are not to misuse them. We're not to neglect them. We are to use everything we have and everything we are in the service of God. And, and this parable points out how we are to use everything in the service of God. This story, how we're to use everything we have and are in the, in, in the service of God. So he said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, what's his glory, do you think? You know, I know what the glory of the King of England looks like, you know, with the carriages and the guards and everything, castles. But what is the Son of Man's glory? What does our glory look like uh, in, 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 as, as we reflect the glory of God? St. Irenaeus, uh, Irenaeus of... Leon, who knew John the Evangelist. He wrote, the glory of God is man fully alive. The glory of God is you, and the glory of God is me when we live life fully. And that doesn't mean we enjoy everything there is out there to enjoy. To enjoy. It means we live in obedience to God. Full life is life in God. Outside of that, there is no life. So when we live, really live, we proclaim God's glory because we are living then in him. And so Jesus is going to, when, when the, the Son of Man comes in his glory, his glory is just that. He is the one who has, as a human being, lived, perfectly lived. And in doing that, he shows us the way to live as well. So he comes in glory with the angels on his throne. And all the nations, Matthew says, will be gathered before him. All the, in Greek, ethne. The story doesn't say that the Son of Man will come and judge Christians or Jews or Judeo-Christians. This says that all people will stand one day before our Christ. And at that point, they will know who he is and who they are before him. We will know who we are as we stand before him. And we will feel two things, I think. We will feel his incredible love. It will almost be unbearable. And we will also feel how small we are in comparison to that great love. Even the greatest of saints will feel small on the great and glorious day of the Lord. And Jesus goes on in this, in this apocalyptic vision. And he says, when the Son of Man comes and all the nations are arrayed before him, he's going to separate them. There's going to be a weeding out. And on the right, there are going to be the sheep. And why are the sheep on the right? Because the sheep are favored. The sheep are righteous. Why sheep? 
sheep were a very valuable animal. They're, they're, they, you can shear them and use their, use their, uh, their coats for wool. You, you can eat them. You can get milk from them. All sorts of things you can do with sheep. Goats, not so much. So the goats go off on the left because they are not the righteous. Okay, and, 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 and he says to the ones on his right, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. We have been made for this kingdom of God. We have been made to be its citizens. We have been made for this joy. And this is what we are called to come into if we have not rejected the call. Now, this is, this is like a, a, a preview of a final exam, right? And what the, what the teacher is doing here, what the master, what the rabbi is doing, he's saying, here's the answer key for the final. So get it right. Because the final is going to come. There will be a day of reckoning and we will be tested. There will be a moment, whether at the end of time, when the Son of Man comes, according to this vision, or on the day of our death, which will come when we, at a time we don't even know, right? None of us know that, knows that. Could be tomorrow. But whenever the time of reckoning comes, Jesus says, here's the standard, be ready. So he says to the sheep, come you blessed of my father into the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of, from the, before the beginning of time. Because, and here it is, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was sick or in prison, you visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And to a person, the sheep are going to say, or the, the folks on the right are going to say, what do you mean when we saw you, we did that? We, I, we never saw you. When did we see you? To which Jesus will respond, whenever you have done it to one of these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you have done it for me. And then to the goats, because they didn't make the cut. And he says the words to them that send a chill through my soul and, and hopefully through yours, because I never want to hear him speak these words to me. Depart from me, you cursed, you cursed one, into the fires prepared for the devil and his angels. Because when I was thirsty, you did not give me anything to drink. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was sick and in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was naked, you gave me no clothing. When I was a stranger, you, you cast me out. And they too are going to say, we never saw you. What do you mean we saw you? Whenever you've done it to one of these, the little, least of my brothers and sisters, you have failed to do it for me. And so there's the standard. The standard is not our dogma or our good theology. Now, nothing wrong with dogma, nothing wrong with good theology, but... We are not judged as theologians. It's not an academic test. The standard isn't prayerfulness. Although the, the prayer is, probably helps you to see more clearly what God wants us to do. But, but the, 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 the judge doesn't say, come you blessed of my father because you prayed so well. The standard is how well we served God by serving the least of our brothers and sisters. Who are the least? They're all around us. And, and the list Jesus gives in this gospel is not an exhaustive list. We, we need to serve the poor and the homeless because in them we see the face of God, or we can. Who's hungry? We are surrounded by people who are food insecure. We 
are so lucky if we have loads of food. How do we share it with the hungry? How do, how do we find ways to feed those who need to be fed? But how about the lonely? Lonely people just need a phone call sometimes or a card or a note. How about the elderly relatives that we have? They just need maybe a visit or, 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 or maybe a call or maybe a present. Who is it who's broken around us? We need to make room in our hearts for drug addicts. We can be so judgmental of people who go off the beaten path. But Jesus tells us that we have all been off the beaten path and we need to be welcoming and loving and forgiving. And those are the ways that we serve God in his little ones. And so this gospel is a real challenge. I mean, the good news is this hasn't happened yet. We're still alive. The, the, the judge hasn't come. And we know the standard. So knowing the standard, we'd better start watching and, and, and serving the God who comes to us and the least of our brothers and sisters. When I got to work the day I was, I was praying about God, seeing God's face, I, uh, at lunchtime, I, I used to go and, and, and say a few prayers at a little church that wasn't far from, from the uh, college campus. And on my way, I passed a woman. Her name was Elizabeth, and she had a little cat, Mary, and she's homeless. And she had all her stuff around her. She was sort of laying against the building. And uh, she had a little cat. Her cat's name was Mary. Did I say that? And um, they were together, and, and I stopped and said hello to her. And I said, Gee, is there anything I can do for you? And she said, well, I'm a little hungry. Uh, she said, there's a bodega over there. There was one right on the corner. And she said, would you mind getting me something and something for my cat? So I said, sure, what'd you like? And she gave me a little list of things that she wanted. And I went and I got it and I brought it back to her. She started eating it. I watched for a while. The cat seemed to enjoy uh, her lunch too. And off I went to church. So I got to church said my prayers, went back to work. On the way home, I was meeting uh, some friends just, just to chat with them at Grand Central um, Station. So I, we met in the food court. And after they arrived, we were talking for a while, and I excused myself to go to the men's room. On the way to the men's room, I'm passing uh, Frank's Hot Dogs. And as I slithered past Frank's Hot Dogs, a guy came up to me, and he was sort of shabbily dressed, and he said, uh, uh, could you get me so something to eat? Could you get me a hot dog? So I said, okay. So I went in and got him a hot dog and fries. And, and he said, can I get a knish? So I said, sure, get a knish. So he took care of him. Off I went and took care of my business, went back to my friends. And then after, after our meeting, I, I was walking to my car, which was parked um, uh, down on, on 42nd Street in a, in a lot uh, just past. The, there's a beautiful church there, Holy Cross, where my mother was baptized, by the way. So I'm uh, walking past Holy Cross, getting to the car. Now it's late and it's cold, because uh, it's sort of this time of year. And I walked past the church, and there was a man laying on the stairs of the church. And to stay warm, he's pulled a plastic bag over his, over his head down to about here. And I thought to myself, holy crow, that's a good way to kill yourself. So I wasn't going to you know, tamper with the guy because, you know, I wasn't, uh, but I, there was a bank right there. I, I pounded on the bank. They, they, it was still, they, well, they had just closed, and there was a guard who was also a cop. He was in the cop's uniform. I thought to myself, great, finally a cop when I need one. So I pound, 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 and the guy says, we're closed. And I said, I know, there's a guy out here who's got a plastic, I explained the situation, and he said, nothing I can do. I said, can you call somebody? And, and um, he again said, he sort of gave me no response. So I'm going back to see if there's anything else I can do for the guy. And I'm about halfway back to the poor man who's still on the steps of, of Holy Cross Church. 
And the, the cop who was in the bank caught up to me, and he said, you know, I had second thoughts about it. So, so he came with his baton, and he helped the guy wake up, and he was fine. the guy was, seemed to be fine. He got the plastic bag off. The, he had already, the cop had already called an ambulance, so I heard the ambulance's siren coming. And, and I, I sort of figured this was under, the situation was under control. I went to my car, and I drove home. Did God answer my prayer? I would say yes. Yes. And I probably didn't recognize it in the moment. But Elizabeth was the face of God in a homeless, hungry woman. The fella who was hungry in Grand Central and needed a hot dog, he was the face of God saying, can you feed me? And the homeless man who could have died on the steps of Holy Cross was God appearing and saying, rescue me. I was blessed because when I looked back, I could see God powerfully answering my prayer. And I pray that each one of us begins to look every day for the face of God around us in the hungry, the homeless, the poor, the lost, the elderly, the sick, the imprisoned. You find yours and I'll find mine because God sends some to each of us. And when he does, he invites us to see his face in them. Amen. the whole church, we, we affirm, affirm that, that we are made in God's image, image befriended by Christ, Christ, empowered by the Spirit, with people everywhere. We, we affirm God's, God's goodness at the heart of humanity, humanity planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God forever at work in ourselves and the world. Through Jesus Christ, God has shown us the sovereignty of divine love and compassion. And he shows it to us from the cross. He shows it to us because of his compassion for the least and the, the lonely and the lost and the broken. And, and, and he asks us to see in the faces of the poor and in the faces of the struggling and the suffering, he asks us to see his own divine face. And seeing him, he asks us to act. Please um, enjoy our prayers of petition and gratitude to God. And to each petition, please answer, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. We pray for all leaders and people of the world that we may expose the powers and principalities of injustice and work together to build your reign of peace. God, God of all goodness, goodness, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
We pray for all who yearn for your light to break forth in places of sickness, toil, or danger, that we may find our way to your glorious realm through our love for one another. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. Your coming is the dawn of a new day that brings hope and healing to our lives. Fill your church with the light of your love, that we may be still and know that you are God and stand in wonder of your majesty. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. Rouse us to live in this present age in light of our hope for your return. Inspire us to encourage each other to tend the earth and to press harder than we think we can to work toward your new creation. God God of all goodness, goodness, hear our prayer. For the coming of the reign of Christ in our world and in our hearts, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. God God of all goodness, goodness, hear our our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, comfort them in their need and help those who care for them. Teach us to bear the burdens of our sisters and brothers with humility. For the sick and those in distress, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. We pray for the health and safety of all medical professionals, especially Dr. Donna McNamara, Dr. Kevin Frisson, Dr. John Thorndike and his wife, Dr. Tara Shatesel hill and Dr. Mark C. Johnson. And for our nurses, Mertella Monroe, Alexandra Woodruff and her husband, Dmitry Shamkalovich, Carla Quinlan, Paula Snyder, Peg Cornell, Andy Strangey, Libby Black, Jill Felter, Claudia Wenger, and Mary Lou Prinzavalli. God, God of all goodness, goodness hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of our congregation, God, God of all goodness, goodness hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Creator God, give us the courage to acknowledge human frailty, limitation, and even death with confidence in your eternal plan. For we dwell forever in light with you, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And we can all say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we are about to take up our virtual collection. Uh, So please... Uh, wherever you are watching us from, in the comfort of your home or, or, or someplace else, um, please take a moment to be generous uh, to God and to God's people and, and write a check or, or give online or do something. And we can certainly use your help because we are a church that gives help to a lot of people. And, um, and it's only because you are generous to us that we can be generous to them. And of course, we also have our bills to pay. So please think of us, but also think generously of how you can, how you can make the lives of others better. Because this offering is not just an offering of money. This is an offering of ourselves. How can you use who you are to bless the face of God as he appears to you today? Please enjoy our offertory music.
Creator God, we give thanks and praise to you for all that you've given us. Everything we have, everything we are is your gift to us. And so now we bring back what is already yours. We bring back to you what you have gifted us with. And we ask you to use our offerings and to use ourselves in your service. We pray that we can be in our world the hands and the heart, the eyes and the love of your son Jesus. Give us the grace to courageously act as he would act when we encounter the people that he has sent to us so that we might bring his love to them. We make this prayer in his name with you and the Holy Spirit. They are, he is one God forever and ever. Amen. Now we're about to celebrate the Lord's Supper and uh, this is the Lord's Supper. So if you have bread or wine or juice, uh, as I do, please, um, please be conscious of that. If, if you don't have it and you want to get it, please take a moment to do that because we're about to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's presence in our world. This is the privileged way that the Lord has given to us as people to remember who he is and in remembering who he is to remember who we are because we are the body and the blood of Christ. So, so the Lord comes to your home today and, and accept and, and be grateful for that privilege. Um, and, the, and, and let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, through your beloved Son and servant, Christ Jesus, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ was born of Mary and shared our human nature. With loving arms outstretched upon the cross for us, Jesus broke the chains of evil and destruction. By his resurrection, your will was fulfilled and you gathered a holy people to offer you praise. Now with all creation, we raise our voices as we proclaim your glory in song. God of majesty and blessed is Christ Jesus, your son, our Lord, in whom your fullness dwells. You sent him to us to be the way, the truth, and the life. Revealing your love, Jesus taught those who would hear him. He healed those who believed in him. He received all who sought him, and he lifted the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us new by water and the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which will be given up for you. 
And when the supper was over, he took the cup full of wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do this in memory of me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the crucified and risen one. Great is this mystery of our faith, and we proclaim it. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be our communion in the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name so that we might be one in fulfillment of his prayer that we would be one. Help us, O oh God, to love as your son Jesus loved. As we break this bread, and as we share this cup, you send us out to be his body. So let us love as he loved. He, knowing our weakness, may we stand with all who stumble. Sharing in his suffering, may we embrace all who suffer. Held in his love, may we accept the ones that the world denies. Rejoicing in his forgiveness, may we forgive everyone who needs our forgiveness. May we forgive those who sin against us. Give us the strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all people we will feast with you at the table of your glory. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. And we can all say, Amen. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. These are God's gifts for you and for me. These are the gifts that reveal us to ourselves. These are the gifts that say, as this is the body and blood of Christ, so are you the body and blood of Christ. So behold who you are and be what you behold. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us who receive it to life that knows no end. This 
symbol broken represents my body. Oh, in this upper room, we gladly feast with you, committing of our service back to you. of you this we do to honor you all this we do in remembrance of you because you have been us too you said take this cup of sacrifice it represents my blood, which gives you new life. Oh, in this upper room, we gladly feast with you, committing of our service back to you. Oh, this we do in remembrance of you. This we do to honor you, all this we do in remembrance of you, because you have been us too. Let us pray. Almighty God, you raised Christ from the dead and established him as Lord over every rebellious power. Give us grace to serve him wisely and faithfully that the world may see his glorious inheritance among the saints, among us, and recognize the freedom of joyful obedience in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It is in his name that we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit. With you, they are one God forever and ever. And we can all say, Amen. With the eyes of your heart enlightened, receive the hope which God has called you to in Jesus Christ. Glory be to Christ our King. And now please bow down your heads to pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face to you and have mercy on you. May the Lord show you kindness and give you peace. May the Lord bless each one of us, the Lord who is Father and Son and Spirit. Now, my brothers and sisters, our celebration as part of it is over. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to love and serve the Lord, especially in the least of our brothers and sisters. God bless you and see you next week.
Draw.